Welcome back, guys. The next thing that we're going to get started with is some uh, more offensive kind of stuff for you guys to play with. One of the things that happens to me, especially when I use tools like Nessus, you might need to generate IP lists. All that's happening here is just a quick little for each loop. Here's the octet. Then I have last octet, which is just a range from one to two by five. Then I go last octet, pipe for each, write out the octet, and then join it with the last octet, which is the range. So this just creates a list of IPs for me. Now, when you run tools like Nessus, they often take a list of IPs. So Oftentimes, I need to generate ranges of IPs so I can feed those ranges of IPs into tools. So that's how I do this. So you'll see that I just put these three lines together and then they generate this whole nice cute range of IPs. Now the next thing is, well, how do I do a ping sweep? So this is a really complex way to do it. I keep this in here because I do get people who actually wanna see like how to use functions in here. So you're gonna see I create a function called new range. So it has the start and end, and you've got the IP. So you've got system.net.ipaddress.start. And then it's got this get address bytes and then it reverses it and then joins it all together. Does the exact same thing for the end of the range. Now it's for X equals IP one, and then make sure it's less than, less than or equal to IP two, and then increment. You're gonna be making that connection to this IP, and then you do that for each IP in the range. New object system dot network information ping, and now new IP range, this is where you give it the start all the way to the end and then for each i want you to ping every single one of those and then only show me the ones where there's a success so that's an awful lot but copy it all just like this and then like literally into your powershell command prompt you just paste it all in and hit enter and it'll rip right through all that and anything that it can actually ping you'll see then he does like this and says, hey, I was able to ping that host. So that's a command line ping sweep. Now there's way less lines of code ways to do this. Got a port scan. So I create ports, ports 2280443389. I've got my IP address. And now for each I in ports, make a connection to target and dollar sign i, which is the port. Now catch if socket equates to null. Say, hey, that port's closed. If not, say that it's open. Boom, port scanner. Surprisingly simple, guys. Really not that bad. So what we wanna do now is we wanna kinda of change the game up a little bit. Let's change it to something that you would actually be doing as a security person. Maybe you're not necessarily in a penetration testing type role, but maybe you're in a vulnerability assessment type role. You're in a situation where you've got these MMAP scans. What I'm doing is I've got these files, which is a Nessus scan and an uh, MMAP scan saved as an XML file. And there's a PowerShell script that I'm gonna run. Well, there's a problem with running a PowerShell script. And the problem with running a PowerShell script is you're gonna check your execution policy. So when you check your execution policy, you're gonna see it's set to restricted, right? Which basically means you can't run scripts that aren't, you know, from Microsoft, digitally signed, say, hey, these are authorized scripts that can be run by the operating system. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna set your execution policy to unrestricted and then force it. So now it's unrestricted. So now you can run scripts 
from someplace else. This is definitely something that you'll see malware do. So you'll see malware yank down a file with this new object system.net, that web client download file. Then you'll see it set the execution policy to force. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run the parse in map against this sam sample in map scan. And when you see it do that, it just runs like crazy. And now if we take a closer look at it, we can see for every host, he's gonna try and grab the fully qualified domain name, the host name, get its IP address, list what ports are open on it. So it's a pretty good little script. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say, hey, go through this XML file. And every case where the OS looks like Windows XP, I want you to format it to where I can see the IP address and the host name and the operating system. So I'll go just like that. Okay, prints out the host very nicely. Okay, very nice, and they're all Windows XP. We can do the same thing where I just wanna see the machines that are running port 22. So you can do some really large scans and then rip through them this way, see that? So these are hosts that are running port 22. It's their IP address, okay? Really good, really good. So now you can say, well, I wanna do that again, but this time I wanna look for stuff that's got port 80 open, and I want you to write it out to a CSV file. So I'll do that, I'll write that out to a CSV file. CSV files are cool, some people like to do stuff with Excel. Yeah, see how it made a CSV file for me? All right, I can open it up in Excel. You know, a lot of people who like to do that, especially in corporate environments where they do things and they throw it in Excel and they try to sort it. A lot of people actually even look at logs that way. Um, I don't think the web page output stuff really looks all that good, but you know, if you wanted to, you could definitely do it. Right, so like here, I'm gonna throw it into a web page. So you'll see now I actually have a, a web page. Okay, and it opens up in a web page. Now, I can do the same thing, right? Now I can take that Nessus file, I can import CSV and pipe that sucker in. Now I'm gonna pipe it to get member and I'm gonna show you all the options that I have. So now that entire Nessus file is sucked into a variable. And now you can see that I get like the CVE number, the CVSS, the Nessus description, the host, the plugin ID, the port, the protocol, the risk, all that cool stuff that I get with the typical Nessus scan. And then I can say, well, just give me all the stuff that's got highs. And now you'll see how it's like, hey, here's the plugin ID, here's the CVE number, here's its CSS score, its risk rating is high, here's its IP address and its port number and the vulnerability description. Really good. Okay. Now, I can tell you something that I do. I know when I'm on security assessments, I like to sort by uh, what has high risk and then unique IPs. You know, deduplicate all the IPs and sort everything down to which hosts have uh, high risk vulnerabilities and then dedupe them down to just unique IP addresses. I can tell you for me, that's one of the things that I do to kind of whittle down my number of targets because you're trying to figure out like okay well what in a network am i gonna go after whittle those things down to ones that have vulnerabilities that there's exploits in metasploit whittle them down to ones that have public exploit code or whatever the case may be but then whittle those down to unique ip addresses i can tell you for me that's a big deal you can do the same thing here get the stuff that's high medium low has the risk Give it, make it give you the plugin ID, the CVE, the CVSS score. And my favorite is this output grid view. I love this. Check this out. 
So it pops out this output grid view and it's searchable and sortable, right? You can sort by the port, the protocol, the CVSS score. I love this. And I can search for stuff, right? So cool.